and you can see where this fan shroud has been rubbing on this coil let me hop up in here so you can see but i believe our leak is right there Circuit one, we're taking pressure readings. We got flat. So we gotta find this leak, but there's no pressure. There's no point in putting refrigerant in there because it's just gonna leak right back out. Fun. I don't know if you can tell. There's a lot of motion in this motor. Almost like it's hula hooping. But it's creating lots of vibration. Maybe this one. Yeah. So we had a first stage low pressure alarm, which is the same thing we had on this one. So we went ahead and jumped right to the same spot. And you can see where this fan shroud has been rubbing on this coil. Let me hop up in here so you can see. But I believe our leak is right there. I'm gonna grab the aluminum stuff, uh, some filter dryers so we can change out those bad boys. You can see there is some good coil damage. So we are gonna get, yeah, quote, four new coil, just so you know what it would cost. But uh, we'll see what we can do about repairing this. Pretty sure that's it right there. First time using this alloy saw by Solderwell. Uh, definitely a little bit of a learning curve, but we got it done in the end. The plan on this repair is to make a repair down the side, which is a little bit ambitious, but we'll see how it goes. All right, we are just getting ready to put this together. There's our big old leak right there, and I noticed its sister coil it has this fat nick in it. It's not bubbling yet, which is amazing. But I swear that one has the same thing. Like how, 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 how. But it's not what we're here for today, but it's worth putting in the notes that if this one leaks, check right here. So I was hoping to just have to seal up the outer tube on this micro channel, but as you can see, I let it get a little bit hot and started to melt the walls into the next channels back. Uh, once it wasn't a single tube repair anymore, I had to end up cutting it and folding the ends back because there's like eight tubes in a micro channel. 
And instead of repairing them lengthwise, I cut them to repair them uh, in a shorter fashion. All right, many tries later, and we are finally there. Um, this is very different than the braze rod. The thing that I learned that's the most important, the instant that rod is liquid, you need to get the torch off of it. You can't feather this out, you can't do any of that jazz. You gotta get it on and get the heat off of there as soon as possible. But took a couple tries. My fix that was all the way along the side was not having it. So we had to go to these two turn ends. I think I'm gonna build a little deal for this, but all right, that's the deal. As soon as that melts, get that flame off of there. This is not braze rod, you can't feather it. All right, there it is, there's our repair. We're building a little doghouse for it. You can see this coil's pretty beat up all over the place, but we're on a standing pressure test right now. We're looking pretty good. Plus we got a fresh filter dryer in there because we opened the system up. We're gonna start to put back. But there it is. The section that was affected is removed. Should cover our patch nicely. We don't actually have the two metals touching, we got foam on foam. And then no air is gonna get through that hole we made. All right, I like it. Something worth noting, these don't last forever. This issue we had here is kind of caused by vibration. So lack of oil in the bearings could be a contributing cause for sure. Back to life. This is the circuit that was down. We're just watching it come on. There's our second circuit. We got two stages back on this compressor. Oh yeah. The coils are nice and clean. The repair is underneath this patch so the air doesn't get pulled through it. 